Happy Friday. Welcome. This is Hollywood to Houston with Sandy Del Cid. Today we got Matthew Paris all the way from Austin, Texas mm -hmm. visiting us again. It's been four years since you were in my show. Yeah, no, it's, it's been great. I'm so happy you guys uh, asked me to come back and um, yeah, I, I immediately said yes. I was like, I would love to, I'd love to come back. I remember those four years ago too. You remember it was on my birthday. Yeah, it was almost birthday. Christmas 2018. It was, yeah. yeah. So it was, uh, I remember the exact date we did the show four years ago. It was uh, December 15th and um, I had run that uh, that uh, benefit for the Houston Texans benefit, the running of the Bulls benefit for the Houston Texans, uh, some sort of charity uh, benefit for those guys. So I was at NRG Stadium in the morning, early in the morning, ran about uh, three miles, did that, and then I came over here. Remember that? Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, I was like, whoa, you're not tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been four years. What have you been doing all this past four years? Oh, wow. Uh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> So uh, I've been really busy, you know, with coaching and everything. But as far as the, the filmmaking goes, everything's been picking up a little bit. We've, um, I started working on Walker, which is a reboot of Walker, Texas Ranger. And, uh, of course, everybody, every Texan loves Walker, Texas Ranger, the old 90s show with Chuck Norris. Uh, this one stars Jared Padelke okay. as the new Cordell Walker. It's a reboot. I get the question a lot of... Um, you know, is it his son? Is it a sequel? I'm like, no, it's a complete reboot. It's still the same character. It's just, just a different, different timeline. So, um, it's more, it's a modern day story, and it's been great. I uh, worked on three episodes for mm -hmm. season one, and uh, season two, I've been working on a lot of episodes. Like, I've been working on pretty much the entire season. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. I love the crew there. Greg, who's uh, one of the set PAs, is great. PA, meaning production assistant, is uh, yeah. is great. Not physician assistant, for those in yeah. the medical field. Yeah. In, in film, we call PAs production assistants. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the medical field, they call PAs physician assistants. Yeah, yeah, our personal assistant or something like that. No, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a production assistant. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so I've been working on Walker. The first season was great. Um, how I got on that was we uh, I knew they were starting a new season. It's filmed in Austin. And uh, I had a couple of acting buddies who were on the show. Mm -hmm. And this was real early on. And uh, I thought, okay. you know, I called them and said, congratulations, that's awesome. They said, well, you should try to get on this thing. I was like, well, how do I go about doing that? So and they told me, they said, this is who you send your stuff to. And here's what you do. And I said, okay, great. So I sent my stuff to them. And they called me and they said, we'd love to have you. Um, you have film experience from your from my short films that I had written and produced and sold those. And um, so, yeah, so they said, uh, you're going to be in episode five. You know, we understand you did, you've done some acting before. I said, yeah, I've done some acting before. Um, I haven't done it in a while, but I've done some acting before because I was, I was writing a lot. I was writing a lot of scripts and books. And um, they said, uh, yeah, come on in. Uh, and they had me as one of the one of the bartending guys. Where uh, it, it was episode five of season one, where I went in and I'm at the bar and I'm just kind of hanging out with a buddy of mine. And uh, it's when Walker was undercover and they, and they had to bust these uh, bank robbers. And we shot that out in Pflugerville, a bar, a small bar out in Pflugerville. It was pretty cool. It was supposed to we set dressed it to make it look like an Italian restaurant. Uh huh. So uh, yeah, we did that and it was it was a lot of fun and. You know, and then a couple of shows went by. I went back to coaching, and they called me back again. And uh, they said, you want to come in for a, for another bar scene? I said, sure, why not? So I came in and did, did another bar scene where uh, it, it was like, it was supposed to be the Walker family bar that mm -hmm. was owned. And uh, that plays a big part of season two. That's why they called me back for season two a lot. But um, they said, okay, great. And then something amazing happened, Sandy. It was... Uh, they called me back and they said, you know, the director had picked you to be one of the villains for, oh. for the... Really? Yeah. You don't look like a bad guy. Well, you know, <laughs> looks can be deceiving, you know. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, uh, no, I'm, I really am a good guy. I, I feel like I'm a good guy. Yeah. Uh, so... I want to invite you back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the last episode, Sandy was like, I don't know about that, dude. I don't know about that. No, no, we're joking. But this show just came out on TV, right? <laughs> it did, yeah. So we're in season two right now. We just got renewed for season three for okay. Walker for uh, from CBS, which is great. So that means a lot of people are watching it. They're actually doing a spinoff show, but they're not filming in Texas, Sandy. Can you oh, believe no? it? No. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what, that's what I said. 
So I know a lot of Texas actors were uh, excited about that, but they're not filming in Texas. They're filming in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh. Yeah. Are you going to go over there? You know what? I want to. That'd be cool to kind of go over there to yeah, see. Yeah, it's uh, pretty. New Mexico's pretty. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. I've been there a couple times. I've been there. I've been there to Albuquerque, and uh, that was a lot of fun. That's why I was younger, and uh, that was great. And um, I, I had fun there. I remember having fun there. But uh, yeah, they're filming in Santa Fe, New Mexico, because they have all that land out there. Yeah, so I, I hear it. that. Yeah. So they need it. So, uh, Walker Independence uh, just got picked up for uh, a whole first season, and it will be set in the 1800s, and it tells the story of uh, Abby Walker, who migrated from Boston to Texas, and uh, I think her husband gets murdered in the series, and uh, she she ends up falling uh, falling in line with uh, this guy named Sheriff uh, Hoyt Rawlings. And they kind of team up together, and they migrate all the way to Independence, Texas, which is a small town. And they become, like, the sheriffs and stuff like that. And it's kind of how, how you know, the Texas Rangers came about. Now, that show's set in the 1800s, so that's a spinoff series. That show is also going to be produced by Jared Padelke. Um, I have nothing to do with it. Um, I wish them all the best. Although, if they did invite me to go to New Mexico to shoot shoot the, shoot an episode, I would have been happy to. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so... Right now, I'm still on the modern day Walker that's shooting in Austin, <laughs> but the the villain role over uh, in season one that was great. That was a lot of fun. Can you say what you did or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. the show the it's show already is already aired. aired, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. The show is aired, and we um, I play uh, I play one of the villains. I'm part of a, a drug dealing gang, who uh, who goes out and you know does bank robberies and does drug deals and and uh, makes money from it and stuff like that. Um, so I part, I part of like the whole, uh, uh, gang. I play one of, uh, the goons and it was a lot of fun. I got to hang out with the main actor who was, uh, Jesse Bush. He flew in from Los Angeles and he was supposed to be a corrupt cop who, who, you know, stole drugs and sold them for money and stuff like that. And it was a fun show. We did a, we did a, uh, uh, car bombing sequence. Oh. It was kind of an action sequence. Now that's fun. Now, see, I yeah. like that. I like being on set when there's action going on. Absolutely. It was, that was fun. So how do they do that? Can you explain a little bit of their tricks? Yes. It's, uh, I wasn't there for that. Oh, okay. So, but the scene was Walker walks out of the family bar and, and the car is on fire. The car blows up outside the family bar. So his reaction is shocked and nervous looking. And then we uh, we did the scene, and we weren't there, but Jesse was there, where we kind of harassed the, the ranger, one of the main rangers, Captain's kid. So we kind of, we you know, he dresses up as a cop, and he kind there's a scene where he kind of, you know, tells him to get out and tries to plant drugs on him and stuff like that to set it, frame him. But the fun scene we did was um, where we're, there, we're at the drug house, and so we shot this in East Austin at this, at this person's house. Okay. And... Uh, the lady was cool. I talked to the owner for a little while, and she was really cool. She was very happy about. It. She had a ton of cats, like a lot of cats. <laughs> like it was like it was like or Jurassic she, Park. She back must there. be single, huh? Yeah, yeah. From what I saw, I guess cats she was keep single. Cats keep us happy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but um, so she had like ten cats. It was it was amazing, and we had to kind of the crew, the production crew, kind of had to, you yeah, know, wrangle them deal. up. We had it. We had a cat wrangler. No, I'm joking. I don't know if we did or not, but um. So, uh, yeah, we shot the scene where the Rangers uh, and, and uh, Captain Ramirez, Mickey Ramirez, who uh, Lindsay Morgan played, she's no longer with us now. Um, so we have another another actress who come in for the second season to play his partner, Walker's partner. But it was uh, it was her, and she's um, she's taking pictures of the house, and we're all in there, and you can see me through. There's a shot where it's through a camera lens, and you can see my back, and I'm holding a beer, and I'm laughing, I'm having a great time. And we were all in there, like, counting this, this fake money, this motion picture money. <laughs> and they had guns on the table and everything. And it was, uh, so it's the scene where the Rangers are uh, kind of uh, scoping out the house. And then we, we hear a noise and we come out. And there was a shot of where I have to stare at the Ranger as I'm walking by. Kind of like, you know, you can't, you can't do anything to us. You know, we're Mr. Mr. Invincible here. So, and that's, that was my direction. My direction was to look mad, look, look evil and... And look, uh, look pissed off all the time. <laughs> yeah, so. But it was a ton of fun to do. Uh, the photo shoot, uh, the promotional shoot that we did at Austin Studios, that was a lot of fun. We, um, 
they called me in before we shot the scene at the house. We, uh, me and a and a bunch of the other guys were there, and we had our props. We had a bunch of fake guns and stuff like that, and we had to do uh, this uh, photo shoot where we were selling drugs or doing drugs or stuff like that. Because in the in the show in the episode, the uh, the Austin DA, the district attorney, and a couple of the Rangers are in this investigation room, and they have all our mug shots and pictures up, and they're investigating us and the whole and the whole. St the whole uh, scene was about that, you know, you know, what do we know about these guys and stuff like that. So if you look closely, um, there's a shot of my mug shot. I'm all like, like that and everything. And it was, it, that was pretty fun. That was oh, pretty fun. Yeah. A buddy of mine in Florida who watched the episode, he, uh, he contacted me and he was like, dude, I saw a whole different side of you. Like you were mean in that episode. And he goes, and he sent me the, the screenshot of my mug shot uh, when they were looking at it. It was good uh, acting. It, yeah. Well, <laughs> I hope so. So, <laughs> hope I hope people bought into it. But um, yeah, it was uh, that was that was probably my favorite episode to work on. My favorite. But season two's been great. They had me as kind of one of his bar buddies and everything. And you know, we had episode fifteen of season two air last night. And it was great. I was in the uh, I was in the club scene where they take down the bad guy. They flip him over in the alley, and there we had to do a reaction shot of me kind of looking kind of surprised and everything. It was it was fun. It was fun. It was me and a couple other people. It was fun. Are, are this filming is taking 12-hour days? or? You know what? Uh, surprisingly, no. Okay. It's, uh, Jared has a wife. He has kids. He lives in Austin. So he would like to make it a regular work day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, we've, we've had 12-hour days before. But with, with Walker, I've had four-hour days. I've had to come in and do something really quick. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That was good fun. <laughs> I, I, there's been a couple times where I've gone in and and, do, and had to do maybe one little shot, maybe a couple angles, do something really quick, then I left. And then there's been eight-hour days, which is a normal work day, you know. And then I've had a couple of times where it's been 12 hours, but not not too much. Mm. Now, Love and Death for HBO Max, that was those were long hours. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Now, how's your film Crisis doing? I heard. I, oh, I saw on Facebook you got a letter from the mayor. I did. The mayor, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I uh, I got a uh, congratulations uh, letter from Mayor Turner mm -hmm. uh, in the great city of Houston, of course. Hello, Mayor Turner. Yes, yes. Greetings. Hope, I hope you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got a letter from him just saying, hey, you know, it's it's uh, we know you're a native Houstonian. It's been an honor. I have a couple of city council members who uh, who are friends of mine. So I'm sure they've been watching. I think they've read some of my articles, and they went to the mayor and said, "Hey, dude, this guy, this guy's from Houston." So, yeah. So he sent me a congratulations letter, and it was great. And, and you were, I bet you were surprised. Oh, what is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they contacted me, and I was like, "Okay, cool." Oh, Very and they cool. emailed it to Austin. Uh, yeah, they emailed it to me. Oh, emailed. So, yeah, it. they okay. emailed it to me. So, uh, they were. Yeah, no, that was really cool. That was really cool. You know, it's funny, Sandy. I uh, I got two honors from mayors. I got one from the, Steve Adler, who's the mayor of Austin, okay. for my contributions to the city and writing the books and uh, doing nice. doing the shows and the films and and uh, he gave me a, I think it was a certificate of appreciation or a certificate of achievement and it was signed by him and all all the city council members of Austin. Nice. But the letter was also signed by Mayor Turner and also all yes. the city council members. So it was, uh, that was fun, surprising and fun. So I'm just happy people are out there watching and kind of getting it. And Congrats. And what yeah. is Crisis about? I know you produce and direct the Crisis, right? I didn't direct it. Oh, okay. So I was one of the writers. I was the uh, sole writer on it, and I was also one of the producers on it. And we, we did that back in uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. So Crisis, how that came about was I was working on, I was supposed to work on a movie in New Orleans. This was back in 2012, 2013. Yeah. I was supposed to work on a movie in New Orleans, and um, that kind of fell through, you know. We, I think it was like some sort of horror movie thing, and that fell through. I read the script. I remember actually I liked the script. I, th I thought it was pretty interesting, and and uh, but it just fell through for whatever reason, like, like movies do. Sometimes these things just don't go through. And uh, and I had worked on another movie in Austin, another short film, and wrapped on that. So I was kind of, you know, I went back to coaching and and I was sitting at home, and I was thinking, you know, what can, what can we, what kind of write or what can I do or something like that. So I came up with an idea of, you know, what if you had this guy who was in his 30s who had no job, who was down on his luck, but he has a college education, and he just can't. He feel like he can't get anywhere 
So he gets very depressed about it. And what happens is he can't go to anybody. He can't talk to his parents. His parents, you know, pretty much tell him, you need to get a job. His friends kind of razz him a little bit, say, hey, you need to step it up here. You know, what are you doing? They all think he's being lazy, which he's not being lazy. He's just He just can't get anywhere. He has no luck. So what happens is that uh, he's thinking about committing suicide. Oh. And um, he calls into his favorite radio station for help. So that's how it kind of starts. Very the, creative. Very yeah. creative, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you, Sandy. I mean, I thought so. <laughs> so uh, so um, how, how it started was the first draft was, um, it was very talky, much more of a talky movie. And I remember um, I was working at the Dell Diamond. I was working uh, with the Dell Diamond for baseball, with Round Rock Express Baseball Club. And uh, I had to, I remember I had the story fleshed out, but I was thinking, you know, what could they, what could he, he needs someone to talk to, but what could it be? So, have you ever heard of Delilah? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually in New Mexico, it's the first time I heard her. I was driving in New Mexico like 20 years ago. Yeah. And she was on. Yeah. And yeah, she's awesome. So that's what happened. I drove to Houston from uh, Round Rock, Texas, like in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked a... I worked a shift at the baseball stadium and then drove to, to Houston for, for something. I had to do something here. And um, what had happened was I was listening to Delilah oh. in the middle of the night. So, yeah, she, she's the late show. Yeah, she's very late. So I was listening to her, and she's kind of like a radio, almost like a doctor in like a way. Like a counselor, yeah. psychologist. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so people call in just to kind of talk to her and... I remember this one person that called in and said, you know, this one lady said her husband was cheating on her or she thought she was cheating on her. And, and there was one lady who called in and, and said, you know, she wanted her ex-husband back because she really missed him and the guy was great. She realized the guy was actually pretty cool and great. And You never know what you yeah. have until it's gone, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I think, you know, the old saying is true. But, um... So that kind of how it started. I said, okay, I'll just make her like another Delilah, you know. So uh, the first draft was very talky, and then once we, uh, once I got the producer interested, his name was Car Carlos. His name was his name is Carlos Sabudio uh, from Look Now Productions, and uh, I said, hey man, I got a, I got a script. Now he was going to do the New Orleans movie that I was supposed to do with him, and that of course I already said that fell through, but. Uh, I sent him the script for Crisis because we just got sitting there on my desk, and I remember I got a text back back from him like three days later saying, "Yeah, no, we we like the script. It's it's great." Actually, he said, I'm, "I'll never forget this." He goes, "Wow, we have to meet. We have to meet now." And I thought, "Okay, cool." So I went and met with him at a bakery in Austin, and uh, this little restaurant kind of type bakery place, and um, he was like, "I thought he was going to talk about." you know, give me notes about, okay, here's how we could do this, and here's how we could do that, which eventually that, it went to that, but, um, we, uh, he was like, all right, so when do you want to start shooting? I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, we haven't casted it or anything or anything like that. And I, I said, I said, we could probably do this in three months. So, because, you know, the locations were limited and mm -hmm. it was a lower budget and, you know, there, there weren't too many effect shots in it. So you have to, you know, we had we needed a radio How station. How many minutes is it? You're... It's about twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah, okay. About twenty minutes long, short film. And then we went off. Uh, we did that, and we had we got Ken Stahl, and I remember the casting process was interesting for that one because with the actors that I had met, they were all like, you know, uh, well, what's what's the story with this guy? Is he a, you know? They all said, you know, this guy. I can do it like him. He's weird. He's kind of a psychopath. He's kind of mentally not there. And I, and I was kind of like, no, no, that's not what I meant at all. Ken Stahl, the actor Ken Stahl, who was based in Austin, I think he lives in Ohio now. He went home to, I think, Cleveland, I think. Um, he was the only one that really got it. I got, he read for us. He was put on tape. Carlos sent me the tape and sent me and a couple of the, and sent me and other actors, I think, the tape, a tape of other actors. And, um, he did really good, and then he emailed me. I hadn't made my decision yet, uh, but he emailed me, and he said, uh, he's like, look, Matt, he goes, I can relate to this guy. I can relate to this guy. You know, I worked a dead-end job. I felt like I was going nowhere. You know, I've, I, know, I know how this guy feels. And I said, okay, that's the guy, because he really understood it, you know. 
that that guy at the you know the checkout the super at the supermarket working and stuff like that who yeah. who really doesn't want to be there yeah. and stuff like that you know I feel like I'm destined for greater things yeah. we've all had that feeling we've all had that feeling so it was very real now the original draft was uh the movie was set on halloween and my original draft it wasn't carlos really wanted to make it more of kind of a thriller mm -hmm. where the first draft was more of a drama okay you know and there there are things where i'm kind of like you know we could have done this better we could have done that better but you know could have would have should have so, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it's good. I, I need to watch it one day. I haven't seen it, but congrats on the awards. And, mm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. We uh, Again, that was a while ago. We shot it, I think, in 2013. It was released in 2014. We Our marketing plan, we had a poster. Our marketing plan was great. I briefly show up in it, too. I briefly show up as one of these, uh, I think, one of the executives that walks out to his car and uh, the main actor is in his car, and he kind of makes fun of me a little bit. And, of course, I wrote it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what's the difference between this guy and, and me? You know, yeah. why does he get everything? <laughs> you know? Which I'm sure we've all been there at some point in our lives. <laughs> right, Sandy? <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, and then we had the marketing. The marketing plan was great. We, um, for Crisis, I decided to... Uh, take it to smaller film festivals um i know a lot of people have talked to me about you know taking it to sundance or taking it to can but um my marketing plan was you don't take it to those festivals because it's two of the biggest festivals in the world like every filmmaker wants to go there sundance huh yeah i'm always in utah so i might as well go visit sundance one day you have to but it's snowing you know when they do it i think it's january right right that's when the snow's there oh. do you ski you go skiing? Right? I went skiing once, uh -huh. and uh, I don't think I want to ski again. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I could try again, but, you know, when I went, I went with professional skiers, so they were not really patient, and I was, like, my first time. Right. But I could get balance, but I didn't know how to stop. Right. So, yeah. I was going down the mountain, mm -hmm. and I couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are the brakes on this thing? <laughs> Just make sure you do not run into a tree. So, I almost yeah. did. Really? And then I said, I think Cher's husband died that way. Yeah. And that memory came into my, my, my mind. Because I yeah. said, well, maybe if I run into that tree, I'll stop. Yeah. But then I heard that's how Cher's husband died. Yeah. So I said, no, I'm not going to. I Finally, I fell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'll just go down. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, I think yeah, I'll just go to the festival yeah. and I'm going to skip all the skiing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um. I've never been to Sundance. It's in Park City, Utah. Um, I would like to go just to see what it is, you yeah. know. But uh, but with Crisis, I didn't want to go there. You know, I just felt like, you know, it was like we're not Spielberg. You know, as much as I would love to say that film festival is independent, and it certainly started out as that. It, it was one of the biggest independent film festivals of all time. It's gotten so huge now, yeah. like the studio movies, you know, premiere there. Yeah. So. I felt like, you know, that was a one in a million shot. Cannes Film Festival, same thing. One of the biggest film festivals in the world. It's France. in France. It yeah, was. it's in France. Now that would be fun, you know, and then you have to fly to France, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are, yeah. So uh, I would love to go there, but I felt like this is not going to be the movie to take, you know, to go to France for. So, um, so what I did was I decided to put a list of smaller festivals together, uh, took it to World Fest Houston. We got the Platinum Remy, um, took it to Canada. We got the, I believe, the uh, Rising Star Award for Best Foreign Film. Uh, we were foreign in Canada. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then once I got those two awards, I knew I was in the driver's seat. I did, a lot of people are like, well, just take it to distributions, uh, distribution um, people, executives. And uh, I said, no, I don't want to do that. I mm -hmm. said, here's my plan. Let's take it to uh, let's take it to a few film festivals where we know we probably have a good shot of winning an award, um, and it was uh, that's what we did and and yeah so uh, once we got two awards I felt like okay now we could take it to, to distributions and and try to see what happens there uh, uh, yeah so um, I t actually took the film to Germany. I sent it off to Germany to this really really big distribution company that does short films in English. Uh, yeah. 
And they took it? No, actually no. Because so, I mean, German is so different. I mean, it is. Well, they asked me for subtitles. They asked yeah. me for like subtitles and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and I think we sent a copy with subtitles. And, um, but they didn't take it. They got back to me like the very next day and they said, thank you very much, but it's not for us. And I said, okay, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, that's another thing I need to talk about. Uh, don't ever like give up just because a distribution company tells you no. There's thousands of them everywhere. Oh yeah. So yeah. there's ways to get the movie out there, you know, to an audience, right? Yeah. So uh, I know a lot of filmmakers and actors and producers and stuff like that get kind of upset and kind of frustrated with the whole process. But just you know, you got to hang in there. That's where my, my sports, my years of uh, playing sports comes into play. But um, Perseverance, it's not an easy business, that's for sure. It's not. It's not no. at all. So uh, so we took it there. The, Ger the Germany company said no. And then I took it to Shorts International. And then now Shorts International is one of the biggest short film uh, distribution people, executives. They have their main offices in London. They have law offices in Los Angeles. They have offices, I think, in New York. So... Um, I took it to, I think their, I sent it to their Los Angeles office. I filled out this thing where, you know, it's, here's the running time, here's this, this, and this. And I didn't hear back from them for like a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I kind of thought, all right, well, there goes that one. And, uh, but here's, here's where it got interesting. I spoke too soon. I, um, they, uh, a person named Jenny, Jenny Hendricks, who was who's not no longer there, uh, who's one of the executives over at Shorts International, emailed me, mm -hmm. and she said uh, after like a month, and she said um, I saw your movie last night. I really like it, and we would like to buy it, which I thought was great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, she sent me a contract, and I had my my lawyers. I have lawyer buddies, and you know lawyers in Austin and in Houston, and I had them look over, it and they said you know they th they think it's fine, and. Had you know, Carlos had to sign it. Uh, who's one of the other producers? I had to sign it, and and uh, yeah, we were off to the races. And it was shown in Europe, Middle East, Africa, and of course the United States, uh, over over three continents. So yeah. it was great. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I had, I had a great time doing that one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you want to talk about love and death for a little while? Sure. You sure. I've heard about that one too. Um, yeah. Tell us about it. Okay. So. I had just finished doing a, uh, uh, a limited series, a mini series for HBO Max. It's uh, six episodes. It's called Love and Death, and uh, it's based on the story of Candy Montgomery. Do you, do you know who Candy Montgomery is? I do not. Yeah. Okay. So, Candy Montgomery was a Texas housewife in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, who ended up murder murdering her best friend. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, and she was very, she was church going. She, she was raised Methodist. Um, that's how she met Betty Gore, who they both became best friends. Their kids played together and stuff like that. So um, it's based on that story. It was originally, it's, it's a true crime story. It happened in Wiley, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And um, their, her husband, I think Betty's husband, worked for uh, Silicon Prairie, uh, worked for, I think, uh, Texas Instruments, so as engineers. And, uh, yeah, so after that happened, there was, it was like, you know, we see murders and news and stuff like that nowadays. It's become very common. But back then, that was unheard of. It was unheard of. So, so sad. It is. It is. So What was her motive? Do you know? Okay, well, it's, uh, I don't want to give, give away too many spoilers here. Oh, okay, here. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a motive. There was a... It was really kind of the first time we discovered that someone had PTSD, but nobody really knew what it was back mm -hmm. then. Doctors really didn't know it. Um, that's what I got from the script. But she, um, yeah, she was a housewife. She, you know, she had a loving family, and she she sung for the church. She sung in the church choir. And so somebody uh, you didn't expect that. You know, I guess people no. can lose it sometimes. You know, I, I don't know. Right, yeah. <laughs> sad. It is. It is. It's very sad. And we all have emotions. You know, we've all been, uh, we, we were born with emotions. You know, the pro the thing is you got to keep them in, in check. Yeah, you control them, you yeah. know. You know, you got to really pray, yeah. Yeah. The most important thing, I mean, what a uh, wise man told me when I was younger is like, you know, you keep your emotions in check. You'll most likely succeed being calmer 
than frustrated and freaking out about everything. Yeah, we just saw what Will Smith did. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the Fresh Prince, the slapper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so sad. You want to hear something funny about that? Um, I have a buddy. Of course, all the memes came out and everything, and some of them were funny, and some of them were kind of like, okay, that's a little too too much, but or a little too far. But um, I have a I have a friend who I who I worked with. He got a tattoo of it. Oh, of really? Will of uh, the back of Will Smith and Chris Rock and the, his hand going across. I'm like, why'd you get a tattoo of that? He was like, it's funny, man. I'm like, I'm like, I don't see why you need a tattoo of it. But um, uh, yeah, no. So um, so back to Love and Death. So she uh, it after the whole trial and everything, and it was a big trial in Dallas and in Wiley and stuff like that. They uh, Texas Monthly uh, did an article on it. Okay. So it's a two-piece article. There's, uh, it's called Love and Death at Silicon Prairie, which is part one, and then there's a part two. And it was published in Texas Monthly, I think, in 1984. And that's how it started. And then, and then they turned it into a book, which is called Evidence of Love. Oh, wow. Which I read. It's very, very good. It jumps around a lot, but it's very, very good. I re- uh, somebody on the Walker set gave it to me once I decided to do, once I got hired to do Love and Death. And um, yeah, no, it, it was uh, it was great. It was uh, Elizabeth Olsen plays Candy Montgomery. Okay. Of course, everybody knows her as the uh, Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. She'll be in the new Doctor Strange too. And uh, when does this show come out? The sh- I heard the show will come out in October. Okay. Maybe like Halloween time, Thanksgiving time. It's six episodes. And, and uh, they're filming in Austin. We filmed in Austin. We filmed uh, around Austin. We filmed in downtown Austin. We shot for about seven months. I had like a mustache. My hair was longer. Yeah, it was pretty funny. But uh, I play one of the uh, church congregants, you know, just one of the townspeople who was affected by it. I was part of the press who, who reported the story. Mm-hmm. So I play one of those guys. And um, I had a lot of fun doing it. I, I had a lot of fun doing Being it. Being on set's always fun. Yeah, yeah, the crew was great. Love the crew. Um, Jesse Plemons was great. Of course, Oscar nominee Jesse Plemons, he was great. I remember I told him congratulations on the set uh, before he flew out to L.A. for the award show. Um, Brad, who played Jesse's double, he was Jesse's double. Uh, he was great. Uh, I talked to him a lot. He was awesome. Uh, just everybody was great. Alyssa Young was great. Dave Bottenbender was great. Becca was great. Uh, Josh Bryan, who also, he was promoted to PA, production assistant. He was awesome. Um, he was on there a lot. Like a lot. Alva, I think of a 107 day shoot, I think he did, I think he worked like 50 of those days. Wow. And I worked about, I think, 30, 35, 36 of those days. So, but it, it was great. Elizabeth Olsen, amazing actress, amazing actress, but also an amazing person. And, uh, and Patrick Fugit, who played, uh, Pat Montgomery, uh, her husband, was, was amazing. And Jesse was great. And, uh, Kristen Ritter was great. They were all great. So, yeah. Yeah. And you don't remember a good name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember people's names. I'm like, hi, who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got to say, I, I, a couple of people from Walker went to uh, Love and Death, and it was great to see them. Certainly Dave and, and Alyssa Young and uh, Becca and uh, Josh, of course. And and uh, I got really close with them and Brad, and, and they were all, it was kind of, it was really, it was really cool. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Are you planning to shoot anything soon? Any produce anything else, or thinking about it? Or you know what, I I did a movie two years ago that's still we're still editing it. We're we're having a lot of things happen with the editor and the director, and uh, it's called the place that bonds us. And we shot it about two years ago in Hutto, Texas, and we we did some scenes around Austin, but we shot it mostly in Hutto. And uh, it was, it's a great story. It definitely has to do with t- today's time mm-hmm. about, you know, uh, everything in political and, you know, people are, you know, friends that grew up with each other are not friends anymore because they believe in something else or just a disagreement. It really has a lot to do with that. Um, but the thing is, I don't know if we'll see it. Uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, it hasn't been cut together. The, the freeze happened. Um, yeah. Our director and editor. Last two years have been crazy. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our director and editor. Uh, he was from New York. He had troubles in New York, so he had to figure that out. And and uh, then he came back to Austin, and he's been kind of laying low for a little while. You know, he bought some land in uh, in Land Passes, I think. So 
you know, uh, I think we'll eventually get there. Every once in a while, I'd be like, hey, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I'm like, well, you know, people are asking me, so. I mean, editing is yeah. just that itself. It's, yeah. it's so, you know, so much work, you know. Yeah. So we've been doing that, and then we've been doing, uh, I've been doing the books. I had another book that was released called The Passing of Time. Okay. So this one, it's not like my sports book. It's very much uh, more, more, uh spiritual more philosophical okay yeah so but i know people who've read it have come back to me and said hey this is this is pretty good some really really deep thinking stuff they so, can find it on amazon huh yeah you can yeah. find it on amazon it's 10 bucks with the rest of my books um yeah it's uh it's been a lot of fun and yeah just you know i've been writing books and the articles have been fun I've been writing a lot of articles just you know passing the time and been coaching and stuff like that however sandy I've just been hired to do the Chosen, mm -hmm. so and and I'm looking forward to that. I leave for Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth area in about two weeks, and go up to the studio up there and get to work on now that. Now that show, it's worth working at. You know, I can even I can even imagine how wonderful it would be to just immerse yourself in the role that Christ is walking right next to you. Yeah, you know? yeah. And yeah, I, I think I would love to work in that show. It's just amazing, you know? Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, it's, it's gonna be great. Like, you know, like Christ is walking by you. It's just, yeah. yeah, that's a show that's worth it. You know, there's yeah. not a lot of good shows out there. Yeah. And that show seems really special. So here's the thing. I have to, I have to regrow. They, they, told, they emailed me this, the costume department emailed me this about two days ago. I have to grow out my beard. Oh, I have to grow. Well, that would be easy, right? Yeah, yeah. My stuff actually grows pretty fast, which is good. It means you're healthy. But uh, <laughs> I have to grow out my beard. I have to grow out my hair a little longer, like what I did for HBO Max. I got. I'm getting all these period pieces that I'm working on. But uh, yeah, you know, the story of Jesus. I mean, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't, you pass can't that beat up. that. Yeah, you can't pass that up. That's just such a so, wonderful show. You know, what I'm playing. Uh, no. I'm playing a Roman soldier. Oh yeah, you just say that <laughs> yeah, a soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm playing a Roman soldier, and uh, it, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. But I, it's season three. I think it's one of the most successful independent television shows ever ever made. You know, I know a lot of people it has who watch a that. lot of success. Yeah, yeah. It, I love it. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. We need more good shows like that. You know, absolutely. Yeah, it's just so much. Some some shows have too much violence, and I just oh yeah. Like Batman, I was like, "Oh my gosh! Yeah. If he beats that guy's head again, I'm gonna walk out." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Batman was too much for me. Yeah, I just, yeah. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" The the Rob, the new one, the Robert Pattinson. The new one, the yeah. Batman, I mean, yeah. he's an amazing actor. Yes, he no, he's I great. I mean, the bad guys were just way too much for me. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, let me, I should just watch Twilight." <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny with the, with Batman with the new one with Robert Pattinson. I was explaining to somebody, like, the Tim Burton ones were gothic with Michael Keane. Uh, the Joel Schumacher ones were silly. It was campy and silly. And uh, that was mid-90s. I remember seeing those in the theater. I remember thinking, oh, my God. You know, this is just, this is not Batman. It needs to be dark and brooding. But, um, and then we got the Christopher Nolan trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy, which is great. I think it's great. It's excellent, especially the middle movie, uh, the Dark Knight. And then, and that was much more... Uh, crime reality you know here's the here lawyers and stuff like that it was very much a, a crime syndicate type movie but I thought it was great and um, and this one is a horror movie it's a horror Batman movie yeah and it's just different it's really different but you know I, I enjoyed it for what it was yeah. you know so I he know did a good, he's a he's a great actor yeah. he did a good job it was just too violent for me but he did a some people didn't want him to be Batman. I don't know why does it matter. They're wearing a mask. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> you know, I, he gets Robert Pattinson gets hammered for the Twilight thing. You know, he it's a movie. He was working. He was so, he was a good actor. Yeah, yeah. And, but he is a good actor. Yeah, like if you see his independent films, it, you can tell there's range there. You know, yeah. he is a really good actor. But uh, when he got cast as Bruce Wayne and Batman, I was kind of like. You know, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, let's see what he does. Yeah. I felt the same way with Ben Affleck. Yeah. I felt like, let's see what he does. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, I, you know, well, it was, it was an okay movie. I don't think it was the best movie. I didn't think it was an okay movie. But, uh, yeah. But I can't wait for The Chosen. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. Season three, we start filming. Uh, actually, we start filming right now, April 25th. Yeah, we start filming. And I'll be there in two weeks, and it's going to be great. Um 
don't forget to watch my uh, Fear of the Walking Dead episode. Uh, oh, that's no, I don't night. watch that either. <laughs> you don't watch that either? Not a big fan of that? Not, not the Walking Dead and all that stuff. No, I just don't like that stuff. I like, yeah. you know, happy stuff. Yeah. But you're in that one too? I am, yeah. I, uh, the show airs Sunday night on AMC. And I'm in, but they, they released a clip where it was my scene. And we're walking in and we're about to uh, go, you know, go overtake the tower. Victor Strand's tower, if anybody who watches the show, which I'm sure there's a lot of people who watch the show. And uh, it was fun. I, I, I was called up. I did that for one day. And I went in. I went to the studio and did it real quick. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I play, I play an assassin, kind of, a, kind of an assassin type guy, kind of a soldier in that. But it was a great time. They yeah. dirted me up because it's supposed to be post-apocalyptic. They put all this dirt on me and <laughs> stuff like that. It was great. So I'm sure it was fun being on set. Yeah. 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 Well, really good. Yeah, well, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's always fun being on set. <laughs> I like this mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I used it at home, hot yeah. chocolate. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the Hollywood to Houston mug. I like yeah. it. <laughs> it's hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah. mine, mine's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's always fun being on set. I think I was the most traumatizing scene I did was I was uh, attending a church when they came and shot everybody for mm. Queen of the South. Yeah. Season two. It was fun, but it was traumatizing. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it's, it's been great doing the shows. I've had a lot of fun doing them. Um, you know, I, one goes down, I get called for another one, which I think is cool because my way of thinking is what, once we wrap production, well, I'll just go back to coaching. And do that. Are you still coaching or no? I am, yeah. I'm, I'm coaching soccer for uh, FC Westlake. I'm the rec soccer ambassador. That's on the weekends. And then I, during the week, I coach basketball for okay. ATX Ballers Basketball Club. And I pretty much control all of the uh, the West Austin area, the Westlake area. I, I do personal training and stuff like that. And then, you know, just yeah. been, been writing the articles and, you know, working on another book. And just keep it busy. Just keep it busy. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. Good. So. Yeah, Austin's beautiful. I like, I like their parks. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a it's a very outdoorsy town. You know, it's great. Um, lately, it's been kind of we've had some trouble with the homeless situation, but I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, I've been down there for the rivers. I like going down there for the rivers. Right. But I didn't see anything. But you know, yeah. Yeah, there's some there's some. I didn't go to downtown. Homes. So yeah, downtowns get a little bit more more dangerous uh six streets get a little bit more dangerous i know all the college students at ut and st edwards and i think texas state are moving to party over at rainy street so yeah we need a they need to clean up that city i mean it's the capital of texas it's the yeah. capital of texas well houston's getting crazy too yeah. I, I just think it's you know yeah so somebody's got to do something about this you know clean we need clean a real up. batman <laughs> probably a real uh vigilante so Elon Musk, yeah. do you want to be Batman? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Want to buy Facebook too? Um, yes, yeah, please yeah, buy yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, no, it's but you know I enjoy living there. There's you know there's a possibility of me maybe coming back here in a year. So I'm looking at that and you know just I'll just keep working, fit, try to finish this new book and keep doing the articles and you know uh, once the chosen comes around, once the trailer comes around. I'll keep people informed with that, and uh, yeah, the the one I'm really excited for is Love and Death, though. That's the one I'm really excited for. So I think that's that one's gonna be really good. So, awesome. and I was I was told the trailer would be out sometime in the summer. Good, good. So yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know if you film anything new. Absolutely. You know, keep me in the loop. Yeah. You know what? You know what movie I'm looking forward to? That's on my most anticipated list. It's Raquel's Legacy, your oh, movie. Oh, yeah. Your movie. Yeah, we just had the premiere on, on Valentine's weekend. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. yeah. I'll let you know when it's available for the public. Right now, we're just submitting to film festivals. Yeah. So that's the step. So. Well, I know I know you invited me to premiere here in Houston. I couldn't make it. I'm sorry about that. I think I was, I think I was working on London. You had a hot date. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the lead actress on Walker uh, wanted to go out with me. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope that's true. I She'll could, be yeah. calling you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but who can blame her, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it was probably a bad weekend because it was Valentine's weekend. But, you know, I wanted to do something for me on yeah. Valentine's. Yeah. So I did the premiere that day. And I might do another red carpet. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about it just because a lot of actors couldn't come. 
Yeah. Some had to work, so yeah. maybe in the summer. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. thinking about it. Well, you let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know. I'll make sure to come down for it. Good, so. good, good. It's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And you know what it's like to see what you wrote mm -hmm. on the big screen. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just a magical feeling. You see it come alive, you know. Yeah, it is. And you've had that experience, you yeah. know, and, and it's just, it's just a, a fun thing, you know. It's a lot of fun. I, I was asked one time by a, a friend of mine who I grew up with, she was asking me, she goes, you, look, you know, you've done the movies, you've done the shows, you coach, you've done the books, you've done the articles. What has been your favorite? And I'm like, well, I never really thought about that. You know, you're just kind of, you're kind of just grinding, you know, you're yeah. kind of just working. But uh, I think the books are up there. That That's a hard question. That's a, that's a hard, uh, yeah, that's a hard question. Uh, I, the, the I books would have are up to there. say being on set. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, but I don't know. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. But, you know, we wear a lot of hats because we're not rich, you know. Right. So we do a lot ourselves. You right. know, we wear a lot of hats, the writer, the directors. But, um, right. but it's all fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I, I have a great time doing it. And you meet yeah. new people and they're always fun. And and then there's some people you don't want to meet. And you're like, I don't want to deal with this person anymore. So, but that happens. <laughs> I think that happens in, in every every In profession. every company, probably yeah. not just, you know. Yeah. Everything. Happens in every profession. Happens in every business. It's just the way of life. So, well, yeah. excellent. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. for coming. It's nice to see you. It's been four years. I know, right? It's it's, it's great to see you. I can't believe it's been so long. I know, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been great, and I, I really appreciate being back on the show, and I had a great time again. And Yeah, thanks for coming all the Absolutely. way from Austin, yep. and, you know, things are starting to get back to normal, and, yeah. you know, start doing a few shows again. So. Absolutely. You know, people are starting to kind of, you know, go out again and have fun again, and that's what I like to see, so... Yes, yes. Yeah. Let's get praying. Well, thank you for coming. Absolutely. And thank you. Thank you for watching, and mm -hmm. we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys.